In today's video, we take off our newly refreshed and renovated plastic beadlocks and put on some brand new shiny metal ones. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Troy, this is Roadside RC. What you'll tend to see here, you'll see some bashing, some crawling, some racing, some drifting. We'll show you how to fix the vehicles when they're broken and we'll show you some parts and tips and tricks along the way as to what we use with them. Today, we have some Boom Racing 2.2 brand new fancy wheels that we're gonna be putting on our Axial Wraith. Recently, we have actually uh, refurbished and put on these old Proline plastic beadlocks along with some brand new USD sticky tires that have been really fun. But we are about three runs in and this happened. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's supposed to happen like that. Uh, we were out. Um, I did the typical let somebody else drive your vehicle kind of thing, and within literally moments, the uh, it came back with the tire all falling off the rim. So these are beadlocks. Uh, these are plastic beadlocks. They are old. I think the plastic's probably a little bit frail. But plastic versus metal, which ones should you go with? Mm. I am going to guess that we should probably go with the metal ones. So we are going to pop all these off and we are going to mount up these metal beadlocks. Could I have saved these? Yeah, I probably could have saved these. If I really, really wanted this design, um, for these wheels, I probably could have put just a little bit of glue or something like that in order to help make sure that this beadlock stayed as securely as possible. And it probably would have worked. I probably would have kept these tires, but I really wanted to go with something longer term. I wanted to go with something that didn't have a ring around the outside. I wanted these wheels to look as big as like, obnoxiously big, as huge as they possibly could be. And so that's why I went with these boom racing wheels. One, Price was good, um, ordered them through Asia Tees, and I was able to get them, they were on clearance, they were on discount, and so I was able to get them for a good price. Um, I'll put links down to some other different Boom Racing products down in the description below. Uh, but I like this, I like this where it goes all the way out to the edge, because that way it actually makes the rim look even bigger, which for tires as big as these, um, it kind of needs that in order to have balanced kind of proportions through there. So. Um, there's nothing necessarily wrong with these pro lines, I don't think. I mean, again, they're old. Uh, you can tell that the plastic where the threads go in is old. Um, they're not in the best of shape, but um, they're not bad either. So maybe save these for another project. We'll see. We'll see what happens. As I look at these boom racing wheels, especially versus the other ones, a couple things to note here. One, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten screws per side actually out here at the edge like a true beadlock so 20 total screws these uh, boom racing are actually only these six screws right here in the middle it's a center the beadlock is a center clamp right here there's actually nothing on the outside of the wheel at all that is the clamping there's some screw holes here but it looks like that is purely just for looks so all of this, um, so 20 screws times four, so that was 80 screws to try to get all these things apart and back together. Uh, it's gonna be six per on here, so much nicer. I don't know if it's as strong that way. Um, I don't really have that experience, so if any of you guys know, is this gonna be good enough? I mean, I assume that this metal on here is thick enough and strong enough that it's fine, but I've never actually dealt with that, so that's a thing. Uh, also, as they come from the factory, they're quasi-assembled. They actually have two of these screws in here. And if you can see, I don't know if you actually can. I'll try to put one in my hand here to see if it'll actually focus on it. But this is a 2.5 millimeter thread pitch screw with a 2.5 millimeter hex on the end of it, which means uh, this doesn't work. This doesn't do the thing. So I actually had to buy a set of these drivers so it's just a nut driver bottom on amazon i'll give you the link as it turns out it actually came with three which i thought were actually different sizes no it turns out it's actually just all the exact same thing so now i have three sets of these um, if you go out there and buy a set of boom racing wheels and you need one of these let me know i might just ship one to you since uh, i don't think i'm really going to need three but it has m two and a half millimeter 
uh, nut driver, which means that fits on there beautifully. So I had to get that, otherwise I would be completely sunk on this. So that's what it uses on there. It'll look nice and scale. It'll be beautiful hardware. Uh, I just didn't have the tool for it. As a comparison though, this is good to note because this is a two and a half millimeter screw, which means more thread engagement, bigger screw, right? Uh, more power ability to clamp. Um, I have a set of Injora wheels that I'll be showing you in a different video. They actually come with one and a half millimeter uh, screws, which I don't, hmm, kind of like. I kind of almost think that two and a half is too small. So one and a half might really be too small. Other thing you got to watch out for on these is, like I said, these two were pre-screwed in. So they were fine. The other four that are on the wheel actually had some, whether this is paint, whether it's anodizing, whatever it is, this coating, it actually had the coating down in the threads. So I took a spare screw that I had just out of my screw drawer and ran it in and out of all of these to make sure that those threads were clear before I tried to actually monkey around with this with the tires and everything in my hands and make all that difficulty wanted to go ahead and actually just do that ahead of time. So that's a couple watch outs. We're going to now get these, uh, get the tires set up on this and see if we can't get these to beat up. note that they sent in the kit actually a big a long what is that maybe almost an inch long uh 2.5 millimeter screw and i think it's just for this exact reason the first one to get started in here a little bit difficult right um everything's lined up everything looks great but um you know you really got to compress this in in order to clamp these beads in and uh the, the other screws just won't reach all the way in there so they give you this one longer screw so that you can actually get all the way to the other side and get this whole process started all right so what you saw me do there is i actually took the other screw out of the other pair of wheels and i ran both of them in you'll see yeah uh, one of them is longer than the other but ran both of them in in order to get it to bead all the way down now everything's lined up and i felt a little bit better about having both of those on there now the other thing i'm going to do so i have my handy dandy little small nut driver that i'll use occasionally got the two and a half millimeter in there with there you go that's the screw that's how that's going to work now obviously metal on metal we're gonna have to loctite the heck out of all these screws so what i'm actually going to do is put some loctite here in a this is actually the lid of a uh, actually the lid of a water bottle and then that way i can just do like that and i can get plenty of loctite on there without having to squeeze that bottle every time it will be a nice handy way to save some save some loctite as it turns out look at that first one done that looks good check that out i'm very very happy with how that looks um that is going to be fun that is going to look good on the wraith part of me actually wants to come in here and paint these parts between the spokes red just to give it that little pop of color because i almost feel like the tire is kind of disappearing into these grooves but you know hey what the heck that can always be a future change right now that's kind of fun look at that let's do the rest of these All right, so this is very important to know. Uh, I went ahead and got a, all these are mounted up. They look great. I was about to put one on the front of the Wraith. Front of the Wraith has um, axial 12 millimeter hexes on it with the, uh, the screw in there. And it won't go on. I don't know if you can actually see this, if I have enough light in there. I mean, it'll go. Like, I think if I, honestly, if I got it lined up right and I screwed it in, I think it would actually go in there. But it's going to be like an interference fit. Fortunately for me, I already had some of these 7 millimeter wide, 12 millimeter hexes on the rear, which means I already had two that I had uh, left over. And they will actually go in there. So, tolerances of things, especially when they're collapsed in, tolerances of things matter as it turns out, and 
If I didn't happen to have these hexes laying around, I don't know if I'd be able to put these on right now. Um, I'd have to literally take this to the bench and maybe grind down some edges or something. I mean, it would go, but it would probably never come back out of that wheel ever again. So do yourself a favor. Um, I'll try to put a link to these down below. These are just the cheapo locking 12 millimeter hexes that you can find online. They, uh, they will go in there, but man, whew, I don't know if the stock ones would. Check them out. Look at that. We are done. Center caps installed. Look at that. That is awesome. All right. So done for now. We're going to let all that uh, Loctite dry and we will get back out here and try this again. Hey, for now, appreciate you guys following along. Go over here to the right, click some videos, see what's next. See, we'll go ahead and watch something else and we will see you the next time with trying these things out. Bye.